It is that time of year again, the most important video of the year. How to release a single in 2023, the 23-day plan. This all started in 2020 when I did a 20-day plan. Three years later, and you get an extra three days in your plan. Don't say I don't give anything to you. But we have to do this because everything is changing. Consumption habits are changing. Trends are changing. Social media is changing. All of this is changing the landscape for releasing music and the music industry in general. After all, you don't get the same organic reach on your Instagram feed as you once did. Facebook, I mean, that's for boomers now. YouTube Shorts has now entered the game. Ads are changing, as is music videos. I mean, three years ago, I was sat here and I was saying, you need to make more music videos because every day it's a free way of getting your music heard and getting attention. In 2023, do we even need a music video? It's debatable. So this is a day-by-day -day strategy on what you need to do to get your new single heard. So strap on your jet-powered budgie smugglers, because it's about to go down. So let's start with an overview on how to promote your music with a Venn diagram. I have my trusty iPad and my terrible writing. How to promote music. Okay. Let's start with this. This is all of the fun stuff. This is your music. This is uh, creativity. This is uh, performance. Everything that goes into the fun aspect, the fun category. This is the bit we enjoy doing. We're artists, we're creative. We enjoy creating this stuff. But then you get all of the not so fun stuff. And this bit over here, well, this is more of the work stuff. This is promotion. This is marketing. This is sales. Ugh. This is effectively work. Now, that's the way most artists think. They have on one side all of the fun, creative stuff that they enjoy doing, and then they realize that they have to do all of the, the promotion and the marketing stuff. But what we are going to do is we are aiming in this Venn diagram for this sweet spot, because this is the bit where not only are we going to try and get the attention, but we are going to try and get the attention without it feeling too much like work, so we don't have that anxiety and that burnout. We're going to try and use all of the fun stuff, all of your skills, all of your talent, all of your music, your song, your creativity and your performance in order to get the attention. So this doesn't feel like making social media content for the sake of making social media content. So what we are doing is we are aiming for that point and we are looking at getting attention using the fun stuff. So when it comes to releasing your single, we need to look at a timeline. This isn't about just putting music out and hoping for the best. This is about planning your strategy. So instead of picking a release day and working backwards, what we're going to do is we're actually going to work forwards from when you get the finished version of your song, which means once your song has been mixed and mastered and it is ready, now we are going to work forwards. Now, my advice is four weeks from when you get back the mix and master of your track. However, I'm going to caveat that. If this is the first time of releasing music and you have no Spotify profile at all, I'm adding in an extra week, five weeks. Now, why is that? Well, because we need to plan. We need to make content. We need to do a lot of things leading up to it. And on top of that, there's the golden rule, which is what can go wrong will go wrong. You wouldn't believe how many times I've been sat with an artist whose song has gone on someone else's profile or it's just not ended up on their profile and they're panicking. And all of a sudden, that release date is closing in. So when it comes to choosing a day to release your song, it should be four weeks after you have the mix and master. But International Release Day says a Friday. Friday is the day that most artists and most labels will release music on. And that's because so much music is being released on that day that most of the industry and everyone around the periphery of the industry know that and therefore they plan their schedule, their diary and what they do around Fridays. It also gives you the most amount of chance to chart with your music. Now, I know that isn't the, the goal, the be-all and end-all, but would be nice if it happened. And because release day is a Friday, that gives you the most amount of time until the next week to count up all of the plays and streams and purchases of your music to see whether or not you might chart. 
It also gives you all of the weekend to be able to promote your music, which is quite handy. Now, avoid big news days. For example, don't release music on Christmas Day. People are busy. People aren't in the mindset of helping you or working with you on your release. They're too busy opening presents. They're too busy eating as much food as they possibly can. Same goes for things like Thanksgiving. Avoid these big news days, these big holidays where people are involved with their family or other aspects of news. And then lastly, before we actually get into the 23-day plan, you need to pitch your music to Spotify. So once you've got your Spotify set up, you can get in the back of Spotify for Artists and you can pitch your music. Now, this is worth doing around about three weeks before it comes out. Why? Because you want to give it the most amount of time that someone's going to listen to it and potentially plan it to go into playlists. So if you want to do this, jump into your Spotify for Artists, go to where it says music. When it does, there's a bit in there which you can say pitch. It brings up a form. Fill that out in as much detail as you can. Don't just pitch your song. Pitch it with as much detail because someone will be listening and someone will be reading. So you need to give them as much information and opportunity as possible. So let's jump into the specifics of this 23-day plan. But one thing here is, I'm going to start with this. I'm releasing music on day 17. Why? Because I want to give your music and your audience and new people coming in the most amount of chances of listening to this song multiple times so it goes in before you release music. Now, Back in the day, 2020 a day plan and 2021 day plan, not as easy. So what we did was we were holding banners up saying five days to go, four days to go, three days to go. That played into the algorithm, but it played into the excitement of building your track. Well, now we can do this much better because of Reels, because of TikTok, because of YouTube Shorts. What we're going to do is we're going to make content around your music two weeks before the actual, before your song comes out. Now, what that will do is it will start to build excitement, but it's also getting the song in front of people again and again. Now, I'm aware that there's a lot of information in the video and in the up and coming 23 day plan. If you want all of this information in an ebook, there is a link below. If you go to that link, click the link, I will email you an ebook with all of this information in pretty much a template. So if that helps, then click it. Otherwise, let's get cracking. Okay, back to the trusty iPad, and we are going in for the 23-day plan. So, we're going to start with day one. And day one is all about setting up the party. Now, this bit is so crucial. If we want the treasure, we have to go to the place on the map where it says, X marks the spot, the treasure is here. Now, right now, that is where the organic reach is, where you're going to get the most amount of free attention is TikTok, Instagram Reels, and YouTube Shorts. Now, YouTube as well. But when it comes to TikTok, I know lots of people are like, oh, no, no, go on TikTok. Tough. It's where, the, it's where the organic reach is. Same thing with Instagram Reels. Does that mean you shouldn't post on Instagram feed? No, not at all. But if you are making specific content for Instagram feed with pictures and with long-form content, you are not going to get that many people who see. But imagine this. If every single time you post on one of these three platforms, you get 50 to 60% of people seeing you for the very first time, even if you only get 100 views and 50 to 60 of those people are seeing you for the first time, that is a huge win. And imagine if you're doing that on three platforms. You could be seeing a growth of hundreds, if not thousands of people seeing you every single post for the very first time. So we're going where the money is. And then what setting up the party means is, are you ready for people to come in? People are going to come into this, this venue, this party, and they're going to they're going to look around and they're going to see things for the very first time. Will they stay? How do we get people to come in and say, this looks like somewhere I want to hang out? Well, it starts with your hero picture. Then after that, excuse my writing. Then after that, your bio. And then after that, things like your highlights or even after that, your links, etc. Because they're going to come in and they're going to see this first impression, which means your hero picture needs to represent who you are and what you do and what you stand for. The bio, that just the, the couple of lines in your Instagram or in your TikTok needs to sum up who you are. We want to get away from a yeah, 25-year-old singer-songwriter who lives in Chicago. Boring, boring, boring. Give me the why. Give me the who you are and why I should care. You've got a couple of lines of opportunity that you can drag people in that are then 
going to make people understand who you are, stick around, and there's more chance of then them going across to your Spotify. Same thing with highlights. Who are you? What do you do? This is the first time I'm seeing you. So let's get that information into a good highlight or pinned to the top of any platform for your first pieces of content. So day one is all about updating and make sure your party is ready. Then you have day two. Now day two is still in the setup, but now what we're gonna do is we are gonna set up your link tree and your Spotify. Now, your link tree is very important. I can't tell you how many times a day I go into someone's Instagram and I see the link and it just takes me straight to Spotify. And I'm like, it's okay. The problem is, is what we're doing is we're instead of saying come in, we're saying go away. We're saying, yeah, go across to Spotify. What we wanna be doing is we want a link tree that gives people more, that give people options. Maybe they wanna watch a video on YouTube. Maybe they wanna go across to your Spotify. And instead of saying Spotify, it should actually give people the reason my new single is out on Spotify or listen to my new single on Spotify. Now that is a call to action as opposed to Spotify. My new video is out now on YouTube. Here's the link as opposed to YouTube. We are giving re uh, specifics to push people across. So instead of just having one link that takes people through to your website or through to Spotify, I want you to have a link tree which is set up so I get to choose. And make sure on Instagram, make sure your link tree also has your TikTok on it. Because the amount of times that I'm like, I don't really watch Reels on, on Instagram, but I might watch TikTok. So therefore, if I find you, I might say it's not really my thing. I use Instagram for something else, but I do use TikTok and I'd like you to be there. But if it's not in your link tree, I'm probably not gonna find it and I'm probably not gonna go looking for it. Then when it comes to your Spotify, I want your Spotify set up and ready, which means I want things like your about section. I want the pictures. I want the links in there. I want the banner sorted. I want everything to make this as professional as possible so when someone comes in, it's not a library. It's not a storage house where you just go, yeah, singles there. It's where can I learn a bit about you? Because if I'm staying on your platform just for a couple of seconds or a couple of minutes extra, that's feeding data into Spotify. That's telling Spotify a bit about me and if it can figure out that data, it might be able to go and find other people who are like me that your music might fit in front of and what's it going to do it's going to put that music in front of people and you're going to get extra views and, and plays because of it now we're almost done with the planning but day three we're going to start thinking about budgets how much money have you got to put into this release now you might say nothing i've got literally no money at all that's fine there's plenty of things that we can do to promote your music which don't need any money but obviously if you do have money it does help it just buys you things it gives you more options so it could be naught or it could be a million dollars because you just won the lottery and happy days if you do then we can start thinking about what we're gonna do, where we're gonna put that money. Are we gonna bring anyone in? Now, you might have some friends, some family that are gonna help, or you might be bringing in professional specialists. You might be bringing in a plugger or someone in PR or a manager for a month to help. Either way, or a playlister. Either way, this gives you some options, but we're not gonna know unless we know how much money, and then we can plan forwards. How much money do I wanna spend on each aspect of promoting this single? So I want you to start thinking about people. Who are you bringing in, if anybody at all? Um, could be content creators, or there could be something to do with content creation, i.e. I want a better camera, or I want a better lighting, or I want to have a better iPhone so I can make more content. That could be part of these budgets. You could also be spending money on ads. Now, ads, which we'll talk about, could be very, very complicated, or it could be very, very simple. But either way, it gets your music out in front of more people. Or it could be things like tours. So these are things where you could start to put the budgets. But rather than get into the release and then think, oh, they want this much money and they want this much money, money and all of a sudden the money's out of control, what you want to do is plan it so you know how much money you've got so A, you don't bankrupt yourself, but B, you can use the money to prioritize the most important things. And then after that, what I want you to do is I want you to set targets. Now, if you are a new artist with a new release, I think it's completely fair to start thinking about a thousand streams in a week. I know that sounds a lot for, for a new artist, but I think we should be having a thousand streams in one week because now we have something to work towards we can say look if in the first day i can get 200 300 400 streams i know i'm onto this i know i've broken the back of it and then the next couple of days i can start working this song and trying to get it out there more but if you just say i don't know i'll put it out see what happens on the whole not a lot happens 
So day three is about targets, it's about goals, it's about planning, it's also about budget. And I want you to think about these things in detail so that we're not going into this blind. Then after that, we are in to day four. Now this is where we start making content. Now, as we've said, micro content is very, very important. And in fact, from this day forward, across the, all the next 20 odd days, you are going to be putting out at least one piece of micro content every single day. Now, I can already hear some people being like, that's a crazy amount of content. And that's why today is important because what we're gonna do on day four is we are going to batch content, okay? And I want 20 pieces of content in this day ideally within an hour, hour and a half. Now, let me tell you how you do this. There's plenty of YouTube videos that I've got on my channel that show you how to do this. But effectively, what you're gonna do is you are going to use the asset, use the song and use the chorus, and then you are gonna go somewhere, ideally outside, it works better. You're gonna go outside and you are gonna film content like you would a music video, and the same thing. You can use a phone, you can use a, a, a DSLR, you can use whatever you want, but you are gonna make content of either you performing or you miming and making a video. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna add the context and you're gonna make 20 of these pieces of content. And that will mean that you have the next three weeks worth of content already sorted. So that means you don't have to think every day, oh, what am I posting today? Oh, what am I posting today? It means you've already got a spine of content that you can start uh, pushing out. So you're gonna batch 20. You could potentially do 50. You know, from having done this myself, I've been out and done three hours worth of shooting and had 100 pieces of content. That is three months worth of content all sorted. Anything after that is a bonus. Now again, I've done this multiple times. You'll see it on my TikTok, you'll see it on my Instagram, and you'll see videos on how to do this in my YouTube. But today's the day where you're gonna batch 20 pieces of content, and let me make this clear, around your single. Not just making content for the sake of it. This isn't about trends, this is about your single. We're gonna push it 20 times with this piece of content, and it's gonna start today. Then we've got day five. Now day five, we are starting promotion. Now the song isn't coming out for another almost two weeks, but we're gonna start pushing it now. We're not doing a five days to go, four days to go. We're actually gonna put the song out. We're gonna put a, a little bit of the song, which is gonna be 15 seconds on TikTok, 15 seconds on Instagram, 15 seconds on YouTube Shorts. We're just putting these teasers. Think back in the day. What would happen is before a song actually physically came out on CD, it would come out weeks, if not even a couple of months beforehand on radio so you'd be hearing the song again 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 and then finally it'd be like the song is out but you've already heard it this isn't a kind of like you don't know so go and give it a go and buy it anyway it's a you know this song you've heard it a hundred times already and now you can go and buy it in a shop Fast forward to 2023, it's not really any different. What happens now is you need to hear it a bunch of times before you just go, do you know, I do like this song. Maybe I will go and listen to it on Spotify when I'm in the car, or maybe I will go and listen to it on Spotify when I'm out on a walk or out on a run. So we're trying to get that in with just micro pieces of content of 15 to 20 seconds of the chorus to make sure it's going in time and time again. And the way we're gonna do that is one piece of content. Now, I'm not gonna write this every single day. I'm just gonna say every single day from here on in, one piece of content is going to go out because we've already batched 20 pieces and we're gonna batch some more coming up, but we're batching this and we are getting it out. Now, outside of that, we are then, when it comes to it, we are gonna start working on the old pre-saves. Now, pre-saves are one of those things that, is it gonna make the most amount of difference? Well. Isn't it great to know that there might be an extra 20, 30, 40 people, 50 people, 100 people that might get a bit of a push when it comes to the day of your release? Because all of a sudden, it goes into their library and they get a little notification saying, hey, that song that you wanted is out now. And they say, oh yeah, you, it's just a reminder. Oh, you reminded me, let me go and have a listen. Why would we not want that? The technicalities of how you make a pre-save, there's millions of videos, there's millions of blogs, it's not the hardest thing in the world to do. The thing here is the psychology behind the pre-save, which is if someone says, hey, that song is out, do you wanna be the first one to listen to it? On the whole, only the hardcore fans will say yes. Everyone else will go, yeah, yeah uh, I'll, I'll just get it when it comes out. It'll be fine, I'll remember, or I'm sure I'll hear about it, don't worry. And what we're saying is, oh, it'd be really good for us if we got that pre-save. So we need to kind of almost barter it. Rather than saying, hey, do you want to sign up for this pre-save? It's taking time out of your day to do it. 
and I know you're not the biggest fan, but you probably will like it, the answer is going to be no. So we flip it and we say, what can I do to get you to sign up to the pre-save? If you pre-save this, I will do something else. So it's more of a kind of like, what are you going to do for them to try and get them an added bonus in, in signing up for this song? So we start thinking about that. What could we do? Well, not only is it going to be added to the library and you'll be the first, but maybe we could incentivize, oops, incentivize uh, by putting in uh, a giveaway or that could be an extra song, or it could be a piece of merch, if there's a merch drop. So all of a sudden it's like, oh, I would like that, that's cool. I did like the design of that t-shirt, for example. Well, you're gonna go into a, a raffle and three people are gonna win a t-shirt and all you gotta do is literally just pre-save the song. Now you've got that extra added bonus for the people who do like you, but they just can't be asked to actually go and pre-save. So it's not just the technicalities of the pre-save, it's how do you actually get the psychology of people to do the thing in the first place? And you have to incentivize, you have to do this, and the way you're gonna do that is by giving people an incentive, giving people a reason to go and pre-save your song. All right then, we are on to day six. Now day six, we're gonna work on playlists. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna look into services like Submit Hub, I know there's people groaning, and Playlist push. Now these, if you don't know what they are, are uh, services where you can get in touch with curators of playlists in order to try and get your music onto user generated playlists. So this isn't Spotify playlists. This is just people like you and I who have got a playlist and that playlist has grown in the same way as someone's social media has grown, their Instagram has grown. Well, their playlist might have grown and they might have, you know, a thousand, ten thousand, twenty thousand people who have liked or follow that that playlist and use that playlist, and therefore that becomes a bit of a commodity. It becomes that they've got some leverage. Now, there are problems when it comes to these sorts of services, and that isn't really the service itself. Usually, it's the user-generated curators because uh, if you ever ask for feedback they can be quite brutal and there's no guarantees that these people will listen to your music and put it onto a playlist so there's a few things that you need to think about number one you need to be clever and careful with the curators that you're uh, approaching so only approach curators where you actually think your music genuinely will fit onto that playlist if you are in a technical metal band and someone who's got a hip hop and rap playlist and says, yeah, I'll put your song in it. I mean, that if that's not the biggest red flag that this is fake. So what we're doing here is we're saying, I need to get the most amount of um, traction from any money that I put into Submit Hub or Players Push. There are other services. I've just picked these two because I know them and, uh, and I know quite a lot of people who've had certain amounts of success. Uh, now, when you're doing this, how much should you put in? In my opinion, if you have a budget, going back to the other day, I would spend 20%. I wouldn't really go more than 20% of the budget because I think there's other things to be able to spend money on. I think when you're looking at, for example, content creation, when you're looking at ads or boosting, I think there's other ways of getting your music out there. But a 20% of budget, let's say you had $1,000, for example, 200 bucks on actually putting into Submit or Players Push will at least mean that some people will be listening to your music who have the, the potential of getting your music in front of more people via user-generated playlists. So day six, I want you to go on to either Submit Hub, Playlist Push, you can do your research on which one you prefer. Um, and I want you to find the curators that work for your music. And then I want you to send your music to a few of those and see if you can get it on some playlists. Now, notice we are doing this at least a week before your release. Now, this is one of these weird ones where some curators just want it on the day. When it's the release, give it to me on the day. If I like it, I'll put it in. Other ones want to plan weeks in advance. So there isn't really a right or wrong answer because you're dealing with actual individuals and everyone works in a different way. But what we're doing here is we're giving people at least a week to make sure that they get into their inbox, they find it, they listen to it, and they can plan ahead. If they do say they like it, then you can remind them on the day and say, hey, you know you said you liked it, you're gonna put it in. I'm just rem reminding you, it's out now. Okay, day seven, and we are now 
10 days before the release. Still plenty of time to keep pushing this, so I want another piece of content going out promoting your song. But today, what we're gonna do is we are gonna set up ads. So from a budget point of view, if you've got some budget, I would say potentially 30 to 50% of your budget should go on some kind of ads. Now, ads can be as simple or as complicated as you want them to be. Now, think of this. You put something into TikTok, you boost it. That's an ad. That's all an ad is. It's basically saying, look, I want this group of people to see this message. That's what an ad is. Now, what that message is and where you put it and who sees it, now that is up to you. For example, if you spend millions and put it uh, an advert in the Super Bowl, so which is going to cost you a lot of money, you know that you are going to get all of the people who watch in the Super Bowl. If you want to put an advert in a guitar magazine, you know that you're going to get guitarists in a certain country seeing your ad. Whether it's a physical magazine, whether it's TV, whether it's digital advertising, all you're doing is saying, I choose the message and I'm trying to actually pick the demographic of people that I put this in front of, which means you need to know what demographic of people will like your music. Now, when it comes to specifics of ads, don't forget you can boost. If you want a little bit more kind of control of your ads, you need to learn enough about Facebook ads, which also includes Instagram ads or TikTok ads. And in doing so, it means you get to really hone in on the specifics of the audience. Now, I'm not gonna go into loads of specifics here because there's loads of courses in DKMBA which go into specifics about advertising itself. But you get to choose if you wanna actually uh, make specific ads, especially things like retargeting ads. You've already seen my content. I know you've seen a certain amount of my content. These are the people who need to see that I've got a new single out. That's retargeting ads. That is a specific ad that you can do very, very easily with a little bit of knowledge. So what I'm saying here is set up your ads. You get to decide what that looks like and how much money, but this is the time where they need to be set up because there's nothing worse than your songs coming out tomorrow or even today and you're sat there fiddling with ads which are a little bit fiddly and something's gone wrong. Okay, day eight, and we are motoring along. Today is all about writing, oops, writing a press release. Now, you might have never written a press release in your life, but what a press release is, is it's information that goes along with the song that you can send to people who have uh, leverage or opportunity to be able to get your music in, in, into a certain thing. For example, a blog, maybe a magazine, maybe a podcast, maybe even a radio station. The, the press release is basically saying, let me sum up all of the important information about this so that you're not trying to phone people up and be like, oh mate, do me a favor, stick my stuff in your magazine. This is a way of saying, here is all of the information in one place. Now, if you've never written a press release in your life, I'm sure there's loads of stuff online, there is also um, a press release template in DKMBA, just in case that helps, where you can actually just fill in the blanks. It makes it a lot easier. But you're looking at about-ish 500 words, I would suggest. You don't want it to be too long. You don't want to give your life story because think about the other, the, the other side. When you've got someone who's just opens up an email and all of a sudden there's there's a, a, a just a huge 1500 2000 word document I've been on that side you just go oh, I can't be asked. I can't be asked I'm not going to read that and all of a sudden it goes in the bin but it could be amazing so give yourself the most opportunity by making sure that it's concise with all of the best bits everything that you need to know about the story and don't forget to add links to the music and to any socials very important and on top of that you also need to add in contact info because if someone likes it and says do you know what? i like this i'd like to do an interview with you they have to be able to get hold of you don't say yeah you know i'm on instagram just search the name i get that all the time and you know what i do nothing i just go no i'm not sitting and, and searching your name in, in instagram send me a link or i'm out i just don't have time it's too disrespectful so make sure you have links make sure you add in your contact info okay we are on day nine and today is about playlists now we did uh, a bit on Playlist Push and Submit Hub, but you might not have any money. Uh, or this might be an added extra way of getting your music into playlists and trying to get more people to find your music via these playlists. Now, there are ways that you can find and uh, contact curators, playlist curators yourself. For example, in DKMBA, there is a bit of software called Sonar, which is a database where you can type in a key phrase or a genre, and it will bring up those playlists with the contact information 
of the the curator and you can get in touch with them via Instagram DM or, or, or email and so today that's what we're going to do we're going to use the press release and we're going to start trying to find uh, playlist curators so that we can actually get in touch with them so firstly we need to research where does your music sit where will people listen to your music because it isn't just as simple as saying oh it's rock oh it's EDM oh it's jazz it's like no no we've gone past that now now we're into moods now we're into where would I listen would I listen to this at the coffee shop would I listen to this at the gym would I put this on for my anxious puppy when I leave them? Anything that you can think of to go, oh, that's quite clever. It would fit into that playlist. You can now do a search for, you can find the playlist. And if you can find them, there's a chance you can find the curator and then get in touch. And at which point what you're going to do is you're going to send your press release, but you're going to send a message, which is very simple. It goes like this. Instead of saying, I see you have a playlist. Can you put my music on your playlist? The answer is probably going to be no. We have to find out the way that the curator likes to operate. So what you're going to do you're going to send a message and you're going to say something like this um, I've just found your playlist I love it I'd love to know the way that I can send you some songs to be considered for your playlist effectively how do you work and how do I get considered for your playlist now they might say you, you, you have to buy on they might say uh, you pay me and I'll listen to it and if I like it I'll put you on or they might just say hey I love your song I'm gonna put it on but instead of saying here's my music can you put this on your playlist it's about how they will consider your music for their playlist so today I want you to hunt these people down I want you to get in touch with them I want you to send your asset your music and the press release to see if you can get your music considered for some more playlists okay we are on day 10 which means we're a week before you release. So at this point, now we're really ramping it up. So if you wanted to, you could go to two pieces of content per day, should you want to. Now, this doesn't just have to be the little music videos. It could be performances. It could be anything that you want is pushing your music and your talent as well. So to get people in and get people hearing you and your music. But we're now starting to gear up. So what we're going to do here is we're going to change the banners on your YouTube channel, on your Spotify. We're going to start making sure everything links together and everyone knows something has happened. There's, there's a new song in the offering because if they know about it, they might get excited about it. So things like new banners where it could have the artwork, it could even say, you know, the, the, the release date next week, for example. But we're having this kind of almost like one day to go. And the other thing we're going to do is we're going to start releasing the artwork. Now, this is also some content that you can make for social media. It's also places that you can put it when it comes to uh, Instagram feed, Instagram story, Instagram reels, TikTok, YouTube shorts, etc. We're starting to use these as assets. Now, ideally, when you're doing this, you're also still speaking to people who are seeing you for the first time. They've just discovered you. But all of a sudden, this becomes exciting. Now, the way you do this is something like, hey, if you like hard hitting riffs, you're going to love the new single that's out next week. Here's the artwork. Instead of just saying, here's the artwork to something that you've got no idea of the context of what this is about. Whereas if you actually say, hey, if you like this, then you're going to like this song. And here's something to excite you. And that's a way to introduce the artwork in in a way that brings context to new people. And more importantly, it's one week to go. Let's start telling everyone. Let's start spreading the word. Hey guys, one week to go. Very excited about this. All right, it is day 11 and now we're starting to go after the big guns. It's radio day. So this is where we start doing the research. We start contacting radio, plays, uh, radio stations. Don't forget, you've already got your uh, press release. So you've got things to start sending out. You've got the song. You've got the asset. And now you've got the artwork as well. You can start sending this out and start to build a bit of excitement. Now, for two years, I was a radio DJ and played a lot of up-and-coming artists' new music. And I loved it. I loved getting new music through the post. But that was back in the day. But what was really interesting was... I would not go through everyone's music. What I would do is I'd be looking for things that caught my eye because I didn't have the time to go through everything. So what I'd be looking at is I'd be looking for the artwork. I'd be looking for a good song title. I'd be looking for something that would make me say, I want to listen to that. So this is the time where you start to research those radio stations and radio DJs that you could potentially get in touch with because I think I, I researched the other day, I think there's... 
37,000 radio stations online and offline in the in the United States. So you can imagine how many radio stations online and offline there are around the world. Crazy amounts. You only need to find 10, 15, 20 of these who like your music and that will start getting out to a lot more people. Now, when you're looking for radio stations, you don't need to go for the biggest radio station. You need to go for the connections. So that could be genre, could be specific music, could be location. If you're based in a town which has a radio station, then you have that connection. Hey, you're in the town. Your job is to tell people about stuff that's going on in this town or city. I'm from this town or city. You have a connection. You have a way in to get onto that radio station. Same thing when it comes to politics. If you've got a certain type of politics, that, that leads in. You could have a certain story that is really interesting to a certain radio DJ or a certain radio station. So it's not just about saying it's music. It's just genre. We have to think outside the box and think about you, the artist, your story, what you stand for, and how that connects with all of these radio stations that potentially could play your music. And don't forget, there is a database of radio stations within DKMBA. But one thing here is be respectful when you're contacting someone about radio. Just remember that they might be getting 100, 200, 300 plus amounts of music and press releases every single day. Keep it short, keep it snappy, keep it colorful. All right, day 12. We are not far away. So now in day 12, what we're going to be doing is a similar kind of thing, but now we're doing blog day. Same thing. We had the press release. We're pushing this out to radio. Well, today's a new day. We're going to put a piece of content out, if not two, on your socials. And then we are going to start looking for blogs. Maybe it's new music blogs. Maybe it's a certain style of music blogs. Maybe it's the area that you live in, the location. Again, same as the radio. But what we're going to do is we're going to start reaching out. We're going to be considerate. We're going to say, hey, love your blog. Just been reading it. I would love to send you my new single and see if you'd consider it for your blog. And in doing that, there's thousands more potential places and people that you can get your music out and in front of. All right, day 13. Here's a big one. How about this? Day 13, we are going to create a merch drop. Now, everything that you do will connect to this single. And what we're trying to do is we're trying to excite people, not just about the single, but also about you, the artist. Here's something really, really important. This is not just about you, the artist, promoting your music. This is about how the music promotes you and builds the audience, which means things like a merch drop are perfect because what you're doing is you're doing something that A, you've got something else to talk about, but also can excite people more than just the music. They might say, yeah, I quite like the music, but I love that t-shirt. All of a sudden, they're a little bit more connected. So what I would do is I would do a limited merch drop. And that means if you think you can sell 10, print 50 or print 30 or even more than that. How about you don't print anything at all? How about on this day, day 13, when you've only got four days until your release, you build a little shop online and you use one of the print on demand uh, merch shops. Now, there's there's loads of them. You can do, go and do your, your research, but there's ones like band merch. I think it's dot, dot com. You've got Teespring. You've got uh, Zazzle. You've got uh, Printify. There's loads of them. Uh, Redbubble, I think, is another one. Redbubble. So there's loads of these kind of print-on-demand um, merch drops. And you can say, well, I want T-shirts, but it's free. What they do is they say, we, we're just going to basically send you the money. We'll have them on print, and we'll only make them when someone buys them. And when someone buys them, we'll send you a percentage of that money. It's perfect. And now you've got something to, to put all of you over your socials. Just for this new single, I am doing a limited edition. And that limited edition might be it's for one week only, and then I'm pulling the entire lot. If you want this, you've got one week to get in. You're promoting the single, you're promoting you, the artist, and potentially you could even start making some money back. The question is, what is it that you're going to design? And can you print a couple of them off and use them as giveaways? Now, day 14, we are getting very close and now we need to make more content because you probably used up most of the content that you did about 10 days ago. So this is content creation day. This could be batching another 20 or 30 pieces of content, or should you want to, you could make some long form pieces of content. Now, when it comes to music videos, do you need a music video? No, you don't need a music video because you're gonna put it on YouTube and then you're having to push people 
onto YouTube. You're pushing people onto Spotify. Whereas the micro content is bringing people in as opposed to pushing them away, it's bringing them in. So it's more helpful than having a massive piece of content unless you have a huge budget and you say, no, no, I'm gonna go and put a thousand, two thousand, three thousand dollars into YouTube and I'm gonna push that video into in front of the right people. In which case, why not? Or you might just say, no, but I want a, a music video. I love music videos. I love making a music videos. I want a music video. Great. If you haven't got one, now's the time. But if you have got one and you want to do a live video, that's another good thing to do. But if not, let's make more micro content. In my opinion, this is the crux of you keeping on getting this momentum. Don't forget, imagine if you got an average of 5,000 views a day for a year. And that could be, for example, you know, 1,500-ish on TikTok, 1,500-ish on Instagram Reels, 1,500-ish on YouTube Shorts, same piece of content. You're looking at nearly 5,000 views over a day on those three platforms over a year, over 365 days. You're getting close to 2 million views, 2 million views. Imagine if just, you know, 1% of those people hit the follow button. You're looking at a lot, 2 million views. You're looking at 20,000 new followers So over a period of a year. So this is how you get that exponential growth. So content creation, I'll leave this up to you if it was up to me I would do more content creation for micro content I'd be I'd be doing exactly what we did and I'd spend the entire day and go and get another 20 30 40 pieces of content so I can keep on pushing this don't forget this song doesn't end the, the song doesn't die it just stops being managed so therefore if you stop pushing it it the numbers will go down but if you don't if you keep bringing it to life it'll keep going. It'll keep getting more, more viewers. It'll get more fans and it'll keep getting a, a life of its own. Now, day 15 is where you are going to start utilizing long form content because it's still helpful. And this is where I would like you to ideally shoot a, a live video. Now, I don't mean going live on TikTok. I don't mean going live on YouTube. I mean shooting something where you can have an added extra. So maybe like an acoustic video or a live video or something extra alongside what you've already got with the assets of the short form content and potentially some other long form content. Now, for me, if you did like an acoustic version or potentially even a, a collab where you brought someone else in and you said, look, we've got the new song. Do you want to come and sing this with me? And we'll do a live video. If you set that up nicely might only take you half an hour 40 minutes an hour to shoot and uh, and make something nice but that could be a really nice way of a pushing it to youtube breaking it down into micro content and hey if it's that good you might even upload it uh, in week two or week three onto spotify as the audio itself now then the day before release day a big big day tomorrow is going to be a big day we've got a lot of things to do but today is the day that we set up those dominoes. We get everything ready. So first things you're going to do is you are going to collect the assets. There's nothing worse than getting to the, the, the day of the release and you're going, where did I put that thing? Where's that? You want everything in one place. And if there's more people in the team, that could be in a band or it could be a manager or it could be just some friends and family, everyone needs to be able to get to those assets. So some kind of, you know, some, some Google Drive or Dropbox or whatever you want it to be that people can, uh, can access. You need this to be as quick and effective and as fast as possible. So collect the assets, label them properly and make sure they are in one place. And then things like if you have a remix video, if you have a live video, if you have an acoustic video, if you have a music video, everything needs to be in there because if you have a spare 10, 20, 30 minutes, you might say, Do you know, I could, I could probably get some extra bits out of that and, uh, and I know where everything is. The next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna prepare friends, fam, and even potentially a WhatsApp. If you've got a WhatsApp with all of the people that you know love your stuff, they might be fans, they might be they might be friends, but they're like, yeah, I'm up for helping. Let's get them in a WhatsApp group and say, tomorrow, it's all go. As much promotion as we can get. Everything we do is an asset. Everything we do, we'll get eyes on the prize and we'll get ears on these songs. And the last part of it, when you're preparing, make sure everything is ready. The biggest bit, I always say this, whenever I'm talking to an artist, sounds ridiculous, you're gonna set that alarm because there's nothing worse than getting up at 10 o'clock in the morning like a classic musician and being like, right, I should probably post it. But this is a worldwide release now. It's the, the whole thing can be started early. So I want you up lickety split. I want you up at eight o'clock ideally, but I want you up early and I want you going straight in. When you get up, we're gonna be checking everything is good to go and we are pressing that button. We are all go tomorrow. So set your alarm. I want you up early, no excuses. Tomorrow's the big day. 
All right, it is the big day, and I hope for your sake you haven't just fast-forwarded to today because this will not work. But this is where we are going to go into all of the detail of your release day. So, firstly, I want you to have woken up early. I know I said that in the last bit, but this is really important. Every minute, every hour, you have got time to get that song, another opportunity to get that song in front of another person, another opportunity to get the press release out, another opportunity to get heard. So wake up early. Then you are going to check that everything is ready. So check the song is out because you don't want to wake up and go, where's the song? Why is the song not out? Because all of a sudden, panic stations, you lose half the day on the phone to, or on a chat to Spotify trying to get the music up and running. Then after that, you are going to change your banners. So we made these banners. I want your banners to say out now. So these banners, change your banners. Make sure that everyone's like, ooh, new music. It's out today. Maybe I'll go and check it out. That'd be nice. Also, change your links. Your links make sure that when you click into your Instagram links or your or your link tree, you're clicking into it, it's taking you to the right place. It's not just taking you to Spotify, it's actually taking you to a track. And one thing you can do here as well is when you're promoting your music, why not promote it in a playlist? It can still be the first song in the playlist, but once they get to the end of the song, it goes into another one of your songs. So maybe you get some extra listens. So try and listen, try and promote this in in bulk as opposed to just one song. Um, now today, when it comes to content, you're not going to make one piece of content or two pieces of content. You are going to make five to ten pieces of content because you've got all day. And I'm talking about reels, TikTok and YouTube Shorts. And this doesn't include things like Instagram Stories or Instagram Feed or a music video. I'm talking about just micro content, five if not 10 pieces of content. Now, for anyone who's saying, that's crazy, that's too much, it isn't. Why? Because of this fickle finger. There you are, there you've gone. I wasn't up for it earlier on, but I am now. So now you can make five to 10 pieces of content. Now, I was on a call with people at TikTok about a month or two months ago, and they were saying, hey, you could do 15. More. You could do more than that on your release day. Not every single day, but when it comes to release day, you can go to town on it. Uh, and I was thinking, it's true. It's, released. it's your release day. It's your big day. So let's get that content out early and at lunch and in the evening. Then after that, what are we going to do? We're going to start messaging. This is about the one-to-one. -one. I want you emailing people. I want you uh, messaging people on WhatsApp. I want text messages. I want you DMing people. I want you messaging people on TikTok. I want it to be, hey, just to let you know, my new single's coming out. Here's the link. Make sure you give them the link. Don't make them work for it. They won't do it. But some of those people will go, yeah, cool. Now, one of these things is you, anyone who's close to you in that WhatsApp group, etc., you are going to say to them, I need you to do something. Don't just listen to the song. I need you to listen to the song in full. But also what I need you to do is I need you to make your own playlist. And I need you to put that song in the playlist, give it a title, and then add another bunch of songs around it because we're feeding data into Spotify. And we're playing on the psychological game of someone's uh, ego to say, hey, you know that, you know that playlist I made? It's bloody good. I'm going to listen to it. And what are you getting? You're getting more, more listens. So make sure you're telling people to make playlists if, you know, if they'll do that for you. Um, then you've got stories throughout the day, more content. Uh, if you've got a music video, this is the time to put it out, start promoting it, start getting that music video out. People like the video. They like the visuals. All of a sudden, they might go across to, to Spotify. You're going to change your artist's pick. Oops, artist pick which is on Spotify. Now, what that means is when they go to Spotify, it's going to be right there. It's like a little advert, and you just add your song into Artist Pick. Um, you're then going to start looking into your ads and potentially boost some videos. So you want this to get out to, to as many people as possible. So if your ads are hopefully running, great. But if not, this is the time where you can be like, look, I'll put an extra tenner. I'll put $20. I'll put $30 into this, and I'll try and get some of these pieces of content out in front of people. Now, when you do this, don't just put the ad out. Don't say, hey, my new song is out. Because think of the context. If you put that out in front of people on on a release day and they're saying, I don't know who you are, 
then we've wasted the opportunity. What we want to do is we just want to have the best piece of content that you've got with the music featuring you and your performance. Because when people see that and they say, hey, this is good, I like this, not only is it going to increase the watch time, they might come in, they might hit the follow button, but if they hear it once, twice, three times, maybe then they'll go across to Spotify. But if you just pop up and say, hey, go to Spotify, they're going to go, no, I don't know who you are. I'm not in the mood for it. So don't order people around. Instead, try and get people into the music. Then other things you're going to do is you're going to make a playlist. You're going to make your own playlist on your Spotify and you're going to add it to your Spotify. And this is going to be playlists of your songs because, again, don't forget, we're not just promoting one song. We're promoting a playlist. We're promoting six songs then or seven songs. And instead of getting 100 people coming in and 100 listens, you might be able to get 100 people in and you might get 300 or 400 listens. So that, that starts to, to, to build up that data and get more people listening to your music. Then after that, you've got your press releases. Anywhere else you can think of sending that press release. Um, press release. And then lastly just in case. Lastly, I want you to do a live party. Now, most people will want to do this live party at a venue, but what I want you to do is I want you to go live on TikTok, live on Instagram, or live on YouTube. Now, there's a reason for this. These platforms, they want you to go live. They're telling you, hey, if you go live, I'll put this in front of new people. So why wouldn't we do that? This is a chance for you to get in front of people, perform your song, maybe have a listening party, have a chat, uh, look after your fans, look after your audience if you don't have fans, but also get in front of new people and do the thing that the platform wants you to do. So if it gets to six, seven, eight o'clock in the evening, go and spend 20 minutes, go on live on TikTok, then go on live on Instagram, maybe even go live on YouTube and see what happens. And hey, maybe you like it and maybe you carry on doing that over the next couple of weeks. The big thing about release day is being prepared over the last 14, 15, 16 days and making sure that this is about work. This is about one-to-one -one and you are not treating your audience as one audience. You are treating it as a bunch of individuals and you are going to contact them, ideally with things like voice messages or videos, to actually try and get them as an individual to go and listen to your music and potentially even put that into a playlist. Now that's release day, but it doesn't stop there. We need to carry on promoting this music for the next couple of weeks. We're gonna do an extra week, but we need to be promoting this for potentially another month or even six weeks with creative ideas, which takes us into day 18. God, I wish I could write better. This is now we're gonna run some more playlist competitions. So we've asked people to jump into playlists, but now what we're gonna do is we're gonna run some giveaways because Hopefully, your merch has dropped if you wanted to have. But now what we're going to do is we're going to run some competitions. So whether you're using merch or whether you're using some, some demos that you've got or a new song, what we're going to do is we're going to start to target 20 to 50 people using your music to build a playlist. And we've asked people and said, do me a favor. But now what we're going to do is we're going to try and incentivize. So we're going to say, hey, uh, incentivize. Uh, we're going to say, if you go and put my music into a playlist, if you do that, I'll put you in the raffle to give you a t-shirt. Or maybe even I'll give you a t-shirt. Or maybe I'll give you a mug. Or whatever you want it to be. Maybe I'll give you a sticker. But whatever you want it to be, try and incentivize people to say, do you know what? I'll do that. I'd, I'd, I'd like that t-shirt. I'd like that hoodie. Or I'd like something. Make it worthwhile. You know, do something that people will say, that's fair. If you just say, hey, if you do that, then I'll give you a high five. People are like, well... I'm selfish. I just don't need your high five. So incentivize people with something interesting. And then on top of that, don't forget, we can still be pushing the music via Reels, TikTok, and, and YouTube Shorts. So I want short form content, at least one, if not two today. In fact, I'm going to say two pieces of content. Because don't forget, this is a sliding door moment. You might have put content out every single day for the last... 18 days or 15 days. You might have also put out 10 pieces of content yesterday. You might have put out one piece of content this morning, but this one piece of content might be the one. That one piece of content might go and get it in front of 30, 40, 50,000 people. And all of a sudden, you're getting more follows, you're getting more attention, and those people will start to think about going across to Spotify. Right, day 19. God, could this be any more comprehensive? We're going to go live on a platform. Go live on a platform. Hopefully, you did this 
on your release day, but I want this to become part of the strategy because social media pl platforms, they want this as part of your strategy. When I talked to TikTok, they were like, oh, go live, just go live. Like if you go live, we will reward you. This is your incentive. If you go live on TikTok, we will make sure that new people are seeing you going live and more people will come in. That is an opportunity to get in front of people in the same way as we've been doing for years. You know, 20 years ago, 10 years ago, you'd go and do a, a, a gig or a tour. When you're out at the gig, what are you hoping for? You're hoping for some of the other acts audience to be there so you can play in front of theirs as well and hopefully they'll enjoy it or friends will bring friends and they'll enjoy it and all of a sudden you start to build this audience no difference you go live 20 people see you that's potentially 20 new people that say now i know who you are and maybe maybe i'll hit the follow button or even if i don't i'll probably see the next piece of content and that gives me uh, a bit more impetus to know who you are and potentially come follow or go and listen to your music so let's start going live on a platform you can also post uh, uh, the long form video, you could post more short form video, but I want you to start to utilize live because I think this will help more than you think to build your Spotify numbers. Day 20, we are going to utilize this big merch drop. If you haven't done it already, this can be the merch drop. I probably would have done it a bit before that, but effectively with the merch drop, now we're going to start really promoting it. Before this point, we were using the merch to promote the music. Now what we're going to do is we're just going to promote the merch. We're going to start using that momentum that you built, see if we can make you some money. So we've got this merch drop. So therefore, why don't we do a giveaway? Because in doing a giveaway, I know what some people will say, hang on a minute, if I'm giving away, I'm not making any money. No, but we're advertising the merch when we do the giveaway. So for the sake of giving away a t-shirt, you might sell 10, 15, 20 more t-shirts. So it's kind of like it's a loss leader. So you lose money on the one, but you gain money on the recognition that other people might buy it. Or people say, oh, I didn't win. Well, I do want one anyway. Maybe maybe I'll go buy one. And so you're going to do a merch drop. You're going to do a giveaway. Now, this will be better if you're trying to get some leverage on top of just the merch drop. So what I would do is I'd say, if you share or if you make a piece of content featuring our new single, or my new single, and you tag me in it, I will put you into a, a, a prize draw to be able to win this t-shirt. That way, not only are you promoting the merch, that maybe you'll get people to buy the merch, but on top of that, people have to do something to get in it, which is gonna be share your music. And if you could get an extra 10 or 15 or 20 people to actually share a piece of content featuring you and your music, and it could be just them in a car singing along. It could be whatever they want it to be. But in doing that, you might get in front of another thousand, two thousand, five thousand, ten thousand people who then hear your song for the very first time. Now, one tip with this is go and find a couple of your friends that you can force to do it. Because then, if they do it and you share it on your stories, other people are more likely to do it. It's that kind of social currency, the social proof of saying, hang on a minute, I'd like to be featured on your socials. And if I do that, I'll get on your socials. Okay, I'll do it. It's just a bit of a nudge. Even though you might have actually set up three or four people who actually do it because you've pushed them into it or even done it for them. But when they share it and then you reshare it, it's telling people, hey, this is what happens if you, if you actually make a piece of content. All right, day 21. And we are on to collab day. Oops. Now, collab day is where we go outside of just you creating content. So, for example, up until this point, you've been making a piece of content featuring your music or performing your music. The thing is, you're going to know so many people who are talented musicians or talented creators. So this is a time to reach out to people and say, hey, do you fancy making a piece of content? Now, hopefully, they'll have seen a bunch of your work, seen a bunch of your content and say, yeah, that sounds fun. We can do something. Why not? It's free. If someone reaches out to me and they've got, you know, they've got something going on, usually I'm like, yeah. How long is it going to take? 20 minutes? Yeah, I'll do that. Why not? Free attention. Why Why wouldn't you do that? So therefore, th that's if if you're in the area and it's worth doing. But why can't you reach out and say, hey, I'm, I'm doing this new single. I'm pushing it. I've got this idea for doing just a little collab. I'd love to get you involved. It won't take you long and you can share it on yours if you want. But if not, it doesn't matter. Just an interesting thing for my audience. Most people will say, yeah, that sounds fun. I'm in the area. That sounds good. I will do that. Now, if you can make this quirky and interesting, for example, imagine if you're just a, um, you're a 
EDM artist, for example, but you bring in a really talented, like Travis Barker-esque drummer, all of a sudden you've just made something weird and interesting and it's just another piece of content. Yeah, I made this, I thought it was fun, might do something different tomorrow, but that's got a real potential of going viral because you've just taken something and made it very different. You've made it interesting and the Travis Barker drummer is going to be like, yeah, that was fun, I just played I just play my Travis Barker style drums to this EDM track. So the collab doesn't have to be another singer, although that would be cool. It could be a collab with a, uh, with a choir. It could be a collab with a, a, a drummer. It could be a collab with a classical, um, a classical harpist. Whatever you want it to be, and you can do something that just brings your song into just a new piece of, uh, a new piece of content that brings your song into a, a new exciting thing. Collabs don't have to be complicated. In fact, they can be a lot of fun. Check out this collab that I did with an artist called Liam who lives in Nashville. Met him on the street, said, do you fancy doing some content? We made some content. 20 seconds worth of content probably took us about half an hour to film, if that, 25 minutes. It's just a nice little collab between him and myself. Check it out. Excuse me. Can I ask you a question? Yeah. Are you an artist? Yeah, I'm a singer. Sorry. Amazing. I actually help artists make better content, and I would love to make some content. Okay, when were you thinking of doing this? I'm on my way to a gig right now. I'd like to do it now, but it will only take literally five minutes. Okay, let's, let's do it then. Right, let's do it. So let's check the bridge. It's got a bridge. Yeah. Okay, song's queued up. This is what we got. What made this content easy to shoot is we shot at golden hour, which is 15 to 20 minutes from dusk until dark. But that looks great on camera. Now I didn't overthink what we were shooting. We just went to the bridge and we shot as many times as possible using different angles. And all we took was a phone and a portable speaker for playback. All right, we are at day 22, but we are not finished because we are gonna make another batch of content. Content batch. And I want another at least 20 pieces of content. Oops. The reason for that is because what this does is this shows that you're gonna be promoting this song every single day for the next 20, 30, 40, 50 days. This song doesn't die. This song just stops being managed. And every time you do a gig, every time you make a piece of content or do a collab or promote it, this song can come back to life. This song can get more views, it can get more plays, it can get more fans, it can get more followers. It's up to you to keep pushing this. And even though we are now almost a week into pushing it and effectively 22 days into pushing it with a week's worth of release, we're still gonna make content. We could still go and make content every single day featuring this song and being creative. So this is up to you. We can keep pushing this song for at least, at least another month. The amount of times that I'm sat with an artist and they're like a week or two weeks in, they're like, do you think I should move on to the next song? And I'm like, no, there's eight billion people in the world. You've only got in front of a couple of thousand. Let's let's push it. We've got, we've got weeks, if not months of getting this in front of new people, new people. If you're thinking about that mentality about just the fan, base then yeah just do do release day and give up this is about new people and that's what reels and tiktok and youtube shorts can do for us right now and day 23 of the 20 d 23 day plan is the first week analysis now what you're gonna do here is, you're gonna go through everything that we've done. You're gonna say what worked, what didn't, because some stuff will have worked better than I'd have hoped, but some stuff wouldn't have worked as well as you'd hoped. So what we're doing now is we're gonna review it. What's working and what isn't? What can we tweak when it comes to the content, when it comes to the press release, when it comes to playlists, when it comes to collabs? Which are the bits where you went, I think that was a bit successful, I think I did something good there, and which were the bits where you went, that was pointless, that was a waste of time, but I'm gonna take the idea and I'm gonna just make it a little bit different or make it a little bit better. We're not just putting it in the bin, we're saying, how can I make this better the next time I go again? And this way, every single release becomes better than the last. Every song, better than the last. Every single numbers, better than the last. Every piece of content, better than the last. And how do we do that? Because we're constantly reviewing, seeing what works, improving, and going again. And also, at this point, don't forget, this is a good time for you to do some thank yous just to say thank you to people. Hey, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. I know I've been pushing my new single and I just really appreciate you getting involved. Why not? Do some one-to-one -one thank yous. Send some voice notes to people who've really been on board with it and just say, hey, I just wanted to say a huge thank you. That voice message of you saying thank you will mean more to them than just typing thank you in an Instagram DM. 
So when it comes to promoting your single, hopefully this shows you with a little bit of creativity and a lot of hard work, you can really make a difference with getting your music heard, building that following, and then on top of that, building the ROI and getting some money back. And don't forget, if this video, which I know has been long, if this video is daunting, then don't forget, then in, there's a link below where you can get the ebook with all of this information in, in pretty much a checklist form. Um, and I'll just email it straight over to you. So if you want that, then go to the link below, email me and I'll, I'll get that over to you. So hopefully this helps. Good luck with your single. Don't forget there's loads of stuff in DK Music Business Academy that's going to help, whether it's going to be templates, whether it's going to be databases, whether it's just going to be more information or other like-minded artists like yourself releasing music that you can get a helping hand from. So if you want to check that out, then the link is below. Otherwise, good luck with releasing your single and next year will be the 24-day plan. So I'll start planning that now. Thanks very much. Catch you soon.